one, right? Okay. Sorry. Maybe it would be best not to. <laughs> I'm learning. No, I know now. I'm more coordinated. Okay. So last time we talked about diphthongs. Uh, do you remember mm -hmm. what the second letter of a diphthong has to be in order to qualify as a diphthong? I think so. Iota or Upsilon. That's right. right. Okay. Now you. You might run across other combinations of vowels, but if it's not second letter iota or upsilon, it's not a diphthong, so it's a separate syllable. Okay. Right. Uh, one I can think of is the word huias, which means son. Uh, the first two letters are a diphthong, <coughs> upsilon, iota, but the, the iota and the Omicron after it, that's not a diphthong, so that's a separate syllable. Uh, one from our vocab, I think, was Galilea. Yeah. Uh, it had A, uh, alpha, iota, alpha, which would be the diphthong, right? And then, so, uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> he pointed that out to me in the car. I was saying it some other crazy way. Galilea. Yeah. <laughs> Another one that I can think of is Basilus, which is uh, king. The epsilon, upsilon is a diphthong. Uh, anyway, we'll get into it, but uh, <laughs> he listed uh, five different, well, actually six different, the last two he kind of lumped together, epsilon, upsilon, and eta upsilon, uh, and he gave a rhyming word. Do you remember mm -hmm. those rhyming words? Uh, right. And yeah. I gave you a, a silly little, uh, I call it, in Nile, in Isle Lake, you'll find the oil and sauerkraut. Oh, yeah. Put yeah. in the soup, bring it to my sneak to stop. Yeah. Right. It, it I didn't memorize right that, I just read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you weren't here. Uh, this is sort of a mnemonic device to help us remember it. Okay. And I, I invented this silly little thing to help. Uh, Isle. Uh, the word the AI in aisle running with the alpha iota helps us to pronounce it. Uh, and he gave the example of Iro. This is on page 11. Uh, Iro uh, is the first two letters there are the diphthong. And then eight, um, the epsilon yeah. iota rhymes with eight. And the example is A. Um, those, that's a real word. Uh, Maybe I should tell you what they mean. I roll means I raise, and A means if. Uh, oil is the rhyming word for the diphthong Omicron Iota, and the word is oikia, and that means house. Oi. And alpha upsilon. I'm going over this again for your sake, if you stand yeah, uh, yeah. because this is important, I think, because uh, all the classes I've had before kind of stumbled on this. Yeah, so, no, I agree. That's so, what it's all in the last class. Yeah, we're going to be practicing reading, and we'll learn by doing it. Uh, the alpha upsilon rhymes with the owl and sauerkraut. And a word that uses it is altos, which means e. Uh, Omicron upsilon rhymes with the ou in soup. And a word in Greek that uses that is uda, which means and not. Uh, upsilon iota rhymes with the we in sweet. I guess you could pronounce it like w e u. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. And a word that uses it is huias, yeah. upsilon iota, and it's got a rough breathing. I was about to ask, it sounded yeah. like, okay. You thought of that. Uh, we'll talk about breathings in just a little bit in 3.7. Huias. So you pronounce that huias. <laughs> and the epsilon upsilon rhymes with the eu in feud, and a word that uses that is euthus which means, um, I got slipped my mind. I think it means near. Uh, What's, I'm sorry, maybe I missed it. Mias means like, sun. Sun, yeah, S that's the one S -O -N. 
Yeah. Not S U. Okay. Um, and then Ada U also rhymes with feud, but you kind of draw it out in pronouncing it. It's like A U instead of U. Um, and the word that uses that is Ayuksam, but I don't know what that means. Uh, all right, uh, improper diphthongs, we talked about that last week. Uh, the three examples, the only three examples there are, are the um, alpha, the eta, and the omega. Sometimes get an, an iota subscript, they call that. It's a tiny little iota underneath it. And it does not affect the pronunciation at all. You pronounce it just like as if it wasn't there. But it makes a difference in translation, whether it's there or not. So okay. we have to pay attention to it. The word that uses that is aura, which means hour, also has the rough rating. Uh, one that uses the eta with the iota subscript is graphe, that means a writing or scripture. And omega with an iota subscript. An example of that is logos, and that's a form of the word logos, which means word. Okay, uh, number three. Yeah. Question. Sorry. Could you salute? No, just a quick technical thing. Could you salute the camera maybe five degrees to the right? There we go. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, but one other thing to notice an iota subscript only occurs under a long vowel. Hmm. And you remember, I'll ask you, how many vowels are there in the Greek alphabet? Seven. 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 Okay, which two are always long? Omega um, and uh, eta. Eta, that's eta correct. Or, which two are always short? Um, sorry, uh, is eta. No, not eta. Eta and omicron. Uh, Sorry, epsilon. Epsilon. That's what epsilon. Epsilon. I, I flipped it in my head. Yeah. Okay. Epsilon. And epsilon is the short of um, eta, or you could say eta is the long of uh, epsilon. Right. And a pair. omega is the long of omicron. The other three can be either long or short. Now, the alpha has an iota subscript. So, that's one way you can tell that it's a long alpha. But we we won't be pronouncing long alpha or short alpha any different. Um, I suppose way back in you know, the time of the Bible or before, they had a slightly slightly different pronunciation of a long alpha versus short alpha, but we're not um, our ears to can't can't discern the difference. Okay, uh, number three there talked about the erisis marks. Did we talk about that last week? Okay. When you have two vowels together that would normally form a diphthong, uh, but they want to pronounce them as separate vowels, they put the two little dots over it, the diaresis marks. And then you pronounce them as a separate syllable. An example is Asaias, which is the name for a person. You know what name that is? Asaias? Jesus. Yeah, I was a little Isaiah. 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 Yes. Oh, yeah. Asaias. Another example is Mouses. <laughs> Strange. Mu, Omega. Upsilon, mo oh, with two, two drops over. Okay, and he says we have an equivalent in, with the word naive in English. Okay, now this, we didn't do that, this reading marks last time, did we? I think that's where we stopped. There a couple of weeks ago. Did we, we do did. it? I thought we covered much. Okay. I, I think we, I thought it was the end of last week, you no? Know? Oh man, I okay. thought that we were in chapter four last week. So we were, that's okay. We were, well, let's, four, sure. let's read this about breathing marks. This is an important thing. Uh, the rough breathing, oh, yeah. 
looks like a backwards apostrophe. Uh, and it's placed over the initial vowel and adds an H sound. A word that we used already was huyas. That has a rough breathing. Um, now, if the word starts, uh, oh, I should have read this. Every word beginning with a vowel or a row has a breathing mark. Um, actually, also every word that begins with a diphthong has a breathing mark. Mm. But you don't put the breathing mark over the first vowel of the diphthong, you put it over the second vowel of the diphthong. We'll see examples of that pretty soon. The smooth breathing looks like a forward apostrophe and it's not pronounced. Um, the word apostolos is pronounced apostolos. Oh, I, I skipped this too. Um, back on the first square bullet point, the word hooper is pronounced hooper. That's the rough breathing. And he says, every word that begins with a row or an upsilon takes a rough breathing. Another way to say that is you will never find a word in Greek beginning with an upsilon that does not have a rough breathing. You won't find it with a smooth breathing. Uh, there are some special situations. If a word begins with a capital <coughs> single vowel, the breathing is placed before the vowel, for instance, Isaac. What name is that, do you suppose? Isaac. Isaac, yeah. Okay. If a word begins with a diphthong, okay, he says it here. The breathing mark is placed over the second vowel of the diphthong, for example, Iteo or Iguptas. Um, Iteo means I ask, and Iguptas is the name of a country. What country do you think that would be? Aguptas. Egypt. Egypt. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Uh, oh. uh, the example words in 3.6 are properly written as Iro, A, Oikia, Aptas, Uda, Uyas, Uthus, Uthus, and Euxana. Okay. That uh, goes back to the pronunciation of those example words. Okay, uh, the summary, I'll let you do that on your own later if you need to. And now we're ready to start chapter four. Questions? Um, there was one word uh, in, uh, sorry, in section 3.6 is like number two. We we're talking about Yoda subscription of the A. Yes. You said pronounced four. Hora. Hora, yeah. Uh, you don't see the rough breathing there because he's, he didn't you know, tell us about that yet, but it will have a rough breathing over the omega. Um, and my question was that doesn't fit the, he, he was talking about it being over a row or, or an upsilon. Yeah, so there are only some when the row is the first letter. Right. Will you see a rough breathing? But there are cases where you can have rough breathing, not over a row or so on. Yes, when the row is in the middle of a word, you won't have a breathing mark there. Right. Uh, my question, we have a rough breathing here over an omega. So That's there are right. some That's cases right. where it can happen over letters other than. The row only case where the exception is the row. Okay. No other letter will have a rough breathing. No other consonant will have a rough breathing. As we get into it and get familiar with things, those questions won't be okay. uh, all That's that fine. confusing. Okay, punctuation and syllabification. Um, <coughs> I don't know if the sound picks up on the recording when it's uh, one of you in the background. Does it, is it harder to pick up sound? Somebody. I'm I'm getting everybody. It seems to be a, a reasonable volume, so. Okay. The reason I ask that is because I, I would like to have some of you do the reading occasionally. Uh, and I, I'd like it to be picked up on the Zoom thing. Okay. Senator, somebody read this section here. 
the, the exegetical insight in yeah. chapter four. Um, when the New Testament was first written, there were no punctuation marks. In fact, the words were run together one after another without any separation. Punctuation and versification entered the text of manuscripts at a much later period. Obviously, this has created some difficulties for contemporary scholars since the way a verse is punctuated can have significant effect on the interpretation of the verse. One outstanding example is Romans 9, 5. If a major stop is placed after kata so, uh, sarka, sarka, yeah. kata sarka, or according to the flesh, then the final section of the verse is a statement about God the Father. The NEB has, may God, supreme above all, be blessed forever. Amen. However, if a minor stop is placed at that point, the final word of the sentence speaks of Christ. The NIV has Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Does it make any difference? Most scholars believe it does. If the latter punctuation brings out what Paul intended, then we have in this verse a clear-cut statement affirming the deity of Christ. He is, in fact, God. The way a translation handles an ambiguous verse such as this at times reveals the theological leanings of the translator. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I noticed, have, it, have you all gotten your workbook? <laughs> I have your God on Kindle. Okay. Still waiting. I, I have a PDF of my work. Okay. I wasn't able to get it printed this week. I will. They had a uh, picture of a uh, column with some brief, brief inscription on it, and it's all capital letters, and they're all run together. It's on page eight of the work. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get it, you'll see that. All right. Um, I remember now we did read this part here in 4.1. Punctuation, there's four different possibilities. The uh, punctuation mark right after the word theos is, looks like a comma, and it is a comma, both English and Greek. The period after the word is a period both in Greek and English. But the period above the line on the third example, we don't have that in English, but that is a semicolon in Greek. Now, a semicolon is just a longer pause than a comma. And it's a major, uh, more major stop. A period is even more major than that. And then the fourth example has what looks to us like a semicolon in English, but it's actually a question mark in Greek. And he has a footnote there. The form of a Greek question is not necessarily different from a statement, punctuation, and context are your main clues. Uh, we'll get into that in the ex exercises after a while. So don't worry about it too much. It, the sem the um, context usually makes it clear. <coughs> Pardon? Question? No. no. Okay. Apostrophe. When certain prepositions, <clears throat> footnote two, prepositions are discussed in chapter eight, <clears throat> words such as in and over that describe the relationship between two items. Um, that's what a preposition is. Sometimes a preposition or a conjunction which ends with a vowel <clears throat> and the next word begins with a vowel, the final vowel of the first word may drop out. This is called elision. It's marked by an apostrophe which is placed where the vowel was dropped. He gives this example, apol and mu are the two words, but see the first word, which is a preposition, begin, ends with a vowel, omicron, and the next one begins with an epsilon. And so they drop that omicron out and they put an apostrophe there. It's kind of like when we, have a contraction of a word in English. Uh, didn't, D I D N apostrophe T. It's the contraction of did not. And the apostrophe is where the O was dropped out. And the reason for doing that is to make it easier to pronounce. 
it's easier to pronounce apamu than apamu. And just like in English, it's easier to pronounce didn't than did not. Or maybe it's quicker. Yeah. And then accents. Um, read that one? Yeah. Would you read it, please? Yeah, sure. Accents. Almost every Greek word has an accent mark. It is placed over a vowel and shows which syllable receives the stress. We believe that originally the accent was a pitch accent. The voice rose, dropped, or rose and dropped on the accented syllable. Most teachers are satisfied with students simply placing stress on the accented syllable. That's what we'll do. Right. And then, yeah, I think good. I remember we read this footnote last time about the, the missionary that finally figured out that there was a musical accent and he avoided getting cooked in the street pot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, read these bullet points. The acute accent shows that the pitch originally went up a little on the accented syllable. And the word is thanatos. Thanatos. Yeah. See the accent over the alpha? Uh -huh. Yeah. It's the first of the three syllables. So would you be like thanatos? Yeah, like how, how would you accent? Thonitas. Just thanatos. Okay. Just, um, just a little. So yeah, like just thonitas. a little. Okay. You, you wouldn't say thanatos yeah. or thanatos. You'd say thanatos. Okay. The grave accent shows the voice originally dropped a little on the accented syllable. Yeah. yeah. Pulates. Now, the first word, dia, yeah. is dia. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's the grave. Yeah. Yeah. I so think dia, it's pronounced dia, gra. Kind of a bit. Yeah. So, it's just um, dia. so the, the second word there has uh, the acute accent. Okay, read okay. on. When read citing on. a single word that in the text has a grave, it is customary <laughs> to change the grave to an acute. For example, if the sentence has dia, dia hules, and you want to reference the first word, you would write dia. Yeah. So you change the gra or gre to a, an acute. Okay, I see the difference in that. Yeah. And when you look up a word in the lexicon, uh, you won't have a gre actually. Uh, you'll mm -hmm. have the acute. Okay. But there, are, uh, he'll, he'll say this wow. and I'll, I'll wait to read it. So read there. the next one, please. All right. The circumflex accent shows that the voice rose <coughs> and then dropped a little on the accented syllable. Okay, this word is glosa. glosa. I'm trying glosa. to make my voice rise glosa. and drop. Glosa. 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 Yeah, now, glosa. we're not going to be trying to do that. We're just going to put stress on it. We'll say glosa. glosa. Yeah. glosa. Uh, there's two ways to pronounce that, glosa or glosa. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just going to put a pitch accent on, on that word with the circumflex. Okay. <coughs> Continue reading. Notice how the shape of the accent gives a clue as to the direction of the pitch. The question then becomes, when do you use which accent? Opinions vary from viewing the rules of accent placement as essential to being unnecessary. Since the original manuscripts did not have accents, and since, in my opinion, they unnecessarily burden the beginning student, I skip the rules of accent placement. If your teacher wants you to learn them, they are listed in the advanced information section of this chapter. Okay, we're going to look at that. Let me get to it. The advanced information on page um, 22. Uh, these rules are not that burdensome. We'll we'll learn these, yeah. but there are a ton of rules for how to deal with accents. And he's um, he refers to another book that he wrote that will give you all the rules. We're not going to worry about. Does it? Uh, accents to the point where it becomes just so burdensome. Yeah. But we do want to understand uh, certain things about accents. Yeah, how much, if I'm getting this right, mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about just the way we're saying the word, 
Yeah. How much does the way in Greek that you say a word of impact it? So if no. I don't go up, yeah. is it, it going to change the word completely or it, the meaning? It can. Okay. To answer that, uh, if you'll go to the back of the book in this section that has gray edges on the pages, yeah. this is the appendix <clears throat> on page um, 418. When accents and breathings are especially important. Look at uh, number two there. <clears throat> You've got five different words. Oh, wow. All one letter words with an ADA mm -hmm. and various combinations of breathings and accents. Mm -hmm. And each of those words mm -hmm. means something different. Wow. Hey. Those are separate. There is one letter mm -hmm. words. Those, that's one letter words. Hey, what yeah. do those oh, things mean? Gosh. Well, I'm not going to tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you have to show up next. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you, I wrote it out uh, for my own benefit in okay. one of my books. So, but we're not at the point where we need to know about that. Yeah, but that's neat. So I'm, yes. I'm, I'm looking at the rules for accent. Yes. If if we're learning the vocabulary and we get the accents correct, it seems like it takes care of it. That's right. Because we're not going to like do something to make words where yeah. we have to follow these rules. That's correct. Okay. Very well put. Okay. Uh, we're going to learn the accent with the word that will help us both to pronounce it correctly and to know how it might affect a different word with a different accent in a different place. Yeah. Uh, that won't happen very often, but we're going to want to learn the accent with the word. Okay. Uh, good questions. Um, I'll, I'll read this next section. However, this does not mean that accents can be ignored. Far from it. Accents serve us very well in three areas. One, for pronunciation. If all the students in the class accent any syllable they wish, it will be difficult to talk to each other. Consistently placing stress on the accented syllable creates a desirable and necessary uniformity. Memorization. If you do not force yourself to say a word the same way every time, vocabulary memorization becomes difficult. Imagine trying to memorize the word koinonia if you could not decide which syllable to accent. Try placing the pronouncing koinonia four times, each time accenting a different syllable. Well, you can do koinonia, koinonia, Coin, koinonia or koinonia. Yeah. And so that's why it would help. Mm -hmm. um, identification. There are a few words that are identical except for their accent. Tis with an acute can mean who, and tis without an accent can mean someone. So that's an example. Yeah. But that, that's also fairly rare. <clears throat> there are also a few verbal forms where knowing the accent is helpful. I'll point these out. I will point out these words and forms as you meet them. However, just remember that accents were not part of the original text and are open to interpretation. Well, it brings a question to my mind. If you see a Greek statue like they show a picture of here mm -hmm. with no accents, no breathing marks, no space between letters. How do you know how to pronounce it, oh. much less what it means? Right. Well, we context. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we have trouble with it because we're not familiar with the language, but those people spoke that all their life. We have a sort of similar situation now with um email addresses, no spaces, no punctuation, uh, all lowercase letters. Mm -hmm. But we can figure it out, can't we? Mm -hmm. Where to put the space and how to pronounce it. So it's not impossible, but you have to be familiar with it. So it, it, it raises in my mind, the question is, when, when did uh, these marks and punctuations get put into the text? Much later. Uh, yeah, I hear that. Um, <laughs> like when? 
because Greek was a spoken language in those early days, it wasn't all that necessary. I, I'm not sure if they didn't exist then or just they weren't not common, but they weren't um, commonly used until about the eighth century AD. Wow. That's what I'm yeah. okay. Now the way, so. now I'm, I'm not a historian, but I've, I've heard little bits and pieces of the history. Nice. When they- <clears throat> You know who did it? What's that? Do you know who put those marks in? No, I don't. Some, I mean, some monks who were transcribing began to do it or? Well, see, Greek was not really the uh, language that was used for uh, the Bible uh, in the uh, early part of the, I mean, at first, uh, so, first uh, three centuries maybe. But after that, uh, I think it was when Jerome tra uh, translated the Bible into Latin. And the Catholic Church used uh, the, the uh, Latin Bible for a thousand years. That was the predominant yes. language of learning. And so a lot of things were lost, including how to pronounce the words. And, uh, this is yeah, this is not an area I'm a specialist in either, but I would imagine a lot of this was capitalized in the Greek Orthodox, right, in the Eastern church because yeah. the byzantine empire held on to that knowledge for a long time i think they did longer than the western church uh, but a lot of things got lost oh, sure. um, so somewhere along the line scholars decided it would be helpful to have these breathing marks and accents and uh, spaces between words to to help um, pronounce and understand it better but we have it now, and it's pretty reliable. Um, well, place. Um, oh, we're going to talk about syllabification. Yep. How to define words. Uh, somebody else want to read for a while? I can read again, or did you want to go ahead? No. Uh, syllabification how to divide words. In order to pronounce a Greek word, you must break it down into syllables. This is called syllabification. And there are two ways you can learn it. The first is to recognize that Greek words syllabify in basically the same manner as English words do. Therefore, if you go with your feelings and you are a native English speaker, you will syllabify Greek words almost automatically. If you practice reading 1 John 1 in the exercise of this chapter, Syllabification should not be a problem. I have read it for you on the website class. Um, it is essential that you master the process of syllabification, otherwise you will not be able to move on to the next chapter. Pardon. Rules. The second way is to learn the basic syllabification rules. Here they are. Rule one, there is one vowel or diphthong per syllable. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so, and he gives uh, examples. Okay. Now, I'm going to read the word first and then you read it after me, okay? Okay. call amen. Now, okay. I'm pr purposely trying to pronounce the omicron uh, the way he says uh, it rhymes with the word not. And the reason for that is so we don't confuse it with an omega, mm -hmm. which it has a long O. It's going to be awkward, I know. To say it that way, but okay, call amen. Okay, call amen. Marturumen. Marturumen. Therefore, <coughs> there are as many syllables as there are vowels slash diphthongs. Well, the second example here is a vowel in the first syllable, vowel in the second syllable, a diphthong in the third, third syllable, and then a vowel in the fourth. Um, <clears throat> one thing uh, I'll point out, he's going to do it again in these rules for accent. You'll never see an accent over any syllable farther back from the end than the third 
uh, syllable from the end. Another way to say it is the accent can only occur over one of the last three syllables. So if you have a four syllable word, like these are, you know, the first one is a five syllable. Uh, the first, uh, first one can't have an accent. Okay. <clears throat> Number two, you want to read? Sure. Um, a single consonant by itself, not a cluster, goes with the following vowel. Footnote four. A consonant cluster is two or more consonances in a row. So now, uh, when we get a little farther here, he's going to talk about consonant clusters in number five. And I've written some words that have consonant clusters. Uh, okay, let's pronounce these words. Rock breathing there on the first syllable. That's not an accent. It's hard to see those differences. Uh, you got to remember, bring better glasses. Yeah. <laughs> than these bands. So now the epsilon and the omega cannot form a diphthong, right. can they? Right. Why not? It's not an epsilon or an iota. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. So it's two separate syllables. Heo ra ka man. Heo ra ka man. And then the next example, a six syllable word, that's a smooth breathing there over the epsilon. Ethe asamatha. Ethe It's not ethe, it's ethe. Because it's not an eta, it's an asamatha. Okay. If the consonant is the final letter in the word, it goes with the preceding vowel, like the first example. There's a consonant at the end. That's the new, so it goes along with the preceding vowel and uh, the mu also. Okay. Read the next one. Then. Sorry, the next rule. Yeah. Uh, if two consecutive vowels that do not form a diphthong are divided. Okay. Um, two cons. Well, we had an example there and. Number two, head, oh, yeah. yeah. But here he's giving us another example. And that's a smooth breathing on the first syllable. Eth, uh, well, that's the same word we had. Yeah, yeah, I think you just added it. Up. Okay, but he's saying that the epsilon there, the third letter, and the alpha, the fourth letter, they do not form a diphthong, so they're separate or the divide. And then, a, sa, e, os. Hmm. Notice that there's a smooth breathing, uh, but since the first letter is capital, it's, there's not enough space to put it above it, so they put it in front of it. So, asa eos. Now, those two little dots, remember what that is? A diuresis. Yeah, diuresis. And also, it has an acute accent over the diuresis mark. Yeah. Really hard to see, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> But that's the, the syllable that's uh, stressed. S-I-E-S. That's kind of a fun one to say. Okay, number four. A consonant cluster that cannot be pronounced is divided, and the first consonant goes with the preceding vowel. Footnote five. One way to check whether a consonant cluster can be pronounced together is to see whether those consonants ever begin a word. For example, you know that the cluster sigma tau can be pronounced together because there is a word um, staurao. Although the lexicon may not show all the possible clusters, it will show you many of them. In other words, that word staurao means I crucify. Oh. A stauros is a cross. Stauraho is a verb. I crucify. Um, and this might be a good place to show you the words I found that have consonant clusters. Now, there are no silent vowels, or silent letters in Greek, in Greek language. We have some words in English that have two consonants together, but one of them is silent. Like we say, a pneumatic tire. The Greek uh, 
uh, word that has the P and pneuma together, both of those consonants are pronounced pneumatic. <laughs> they would say the P and the N. They're pronounced. And even though these consonant clusters I've got on the board, that's the words, the consonants that are underlined, they're going to be very difficult for us to say in English. Each one of those is pronounced. Let's it's try to do it. by the way. That looks like an onomatopoeia. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Two. 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 We used to have the word patui. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's patuo. Patuo. Now, two. Two. this next one, is a sigma and theta together. Spenao. You ever heard the word asthma? That's a sigma and a th. I'll just start saying asthma and everyone. And the word means strength. Here's a sigma and a p and a rho, actually. All three of those are it's a consonant cluster, but they're all pronounced. Spragus. Spragus. It means it's a seal, not the animal, yeah. but the uh, to seal something. To seal something, like yeah. on the two lines. Yeah. Spragidso is the verb form. Okay. To this see. is the noun. Interesting. Uh, P and theta together. Conato. Uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, means uh, envy. Fine. Oh. Uh, it's hard to say. Thaneto. It's like an F T H. It's it's so hard to not put that omicron between the phi and the theta. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and this one, kachitso. Kachitso. It means create. I forgot to close parentheses. Tidso, that means to create. That's a zeta, right? Tidso? Yes. Tidso. And here's one beta and delta together. Pedalugma. 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 Now, these two do not form a consonant cluster because uh, they're separate syllables. The way you would break this one. Um, yeah. I think it would be it. You break it after the lambda, Fidel, Ug, Ma. Fidel, Ug, Ma. And then Mu, Nu together. Mene, um, Manu, Mene, Manu. Um, we've got the word uh, mnemonic uh, device. Yeah. It uses the uh, it's got an M and an N, but we don't, in English, we don't pronounce the M, uh, but the Greeks do. And there is another word I can think of, mana, <coughs> mu, nu, alpha. That's a mina. Remember the widow and her two mines? Yeah. That was, no, that was, that was not that word. Uh, when the, the master gave divided his money to his slaves, you know, they were called minas. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some examples of the hard to pronounce consonant clusters. Okay, and uh, he tells, uh, oh, in number four that we just read there, in then the sigma theta is a consonant cl cluster. <clears throat> And we had an example there, it's thin out all there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I think we have enough on that. Then number five, you want to read that one? A consonant cluster that can be pronounced together goes with the following vowel. Christos, uh, the key in the row can be pronounced together, so it goes with the eo. 
Chris. Toss. It's the first syllable. And stop. Toss. Toss. So, what word is that, do you think? Christ. Okay. Right. There you go. <laughs> uh, grafe. Grafe. Um, grafe. Gamma and the row grafe. can be pronounced together. So it goes with the alphabet. Oh, excuse me. Grafe. And it's almost natural to break it that way, isn't it? Yeah. So, what he said, if you just go with your feeling, you could probably get it right. Can I ask that? Yes, please. I'm going all the way back to our first lesson. Okay. I'm, I'm noticing that sometimes phi, when it's being used, the line goes above the O part. Yeah. But on our booklet, it doesn't. Oh, it just goes straight down. Good observation. It's just a font style that's different. Um, I, I like it when it does. If it doesn't matter, I liked it when it went above because it forms a P and an H. If you separate them, you put them together, and it oh. looks like that symbol. Okay. Well, actually, I like it too when you put the line straight yeah, through. Yeah. Well, anyway, if it doesn't matter, then I'll. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. It's just it was one of my mnemonic devices for I <laughs> remember that word, that letter. Yeah. I think the reason they did that is you can do it without lifting your pen from the paper. Mm -hmm. It's more of a cursive style. Okay. But it, it if you look at different Greek fonts, some of them have it that way, some don't. Thank you. Um and this includes a consonant cluster formed with mu or nu as a second letter, which is not natural for an English speaker. And here he's given us epignosis. The gamma nu is a consonant cluster that can be pronounced, even though it's harder for us. Epignosis. And then another example is a theta nu. Ethnesin. Ethnesin. Yes. Those two consonant clusters, even though they're harder for an yes. English speaker to pronounce, they are Ethnes. possible Ethnes. to pronounce. Ethnes. Ethnes. And then number six, you want to read that? Double consonances, sorry, double consonants are divided. <clears throat> Quick note six. Uh, a double consonant is when the same consonant occurs twice in a row. Okay. Now, the first one, uh, apangeloma. Now, do you remember gamma nasals? Yeah. Yes. A gamma nasal is what? Um, a gamma followed by another gamma or, and I forget three what. Di three other letters. That, right. Uh, a kappa, a key, or Cap, uh, or kappa, k, or c. Uh, and here we've got uh, they break this two up? gammas, angelaman, okay. and uh, the second example is paresia. Okay, how do you say that? Paresia. No, the first one. Uh, um, yeah, with the gamma nasal, the first gamma gets uh, pronounced like a nu. Like yes, a I understand. It's just say the word. Yes, okay. it's, it's hard to think of that nasal actually being a separate thing than the right. than than the gamma because they go together. Yeah, it's an odd thing to say that's a syllable. It is. Uh, it's <laughs> almost like a a, a, a diphthong. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, another example he gave was angle. Yeah. Angels. Yeah. Dividing between the L's feels weird too. It's, yeah. Like it's that's true. Sound. Yeah. We um, caught that. Angelum. Yeah. That's not making a lot of sense. Okay. It isn't. <laughs> that's okay. It's all right. It doesn't change how I'm going to say it. I mean, it's just, it's almost a arbitrary statement because you don't separate them and pronounce it like that it's shown i mean I, it's not affecting the pronunciation I don't know. and then number seven compound words are divided where joined with note seven 
Compound words are words made up of two distinct words. Of course, right now you cannot tell what is a compound word because you do not know any of the words. But we can kind of guess antichristos. Antichristos, excuse me. Um, what word do you think that is? Antichrist. There, there you go. And the next one is ek balo. Ek is a preposition meaning out or from or away from. And balo is a verb meaning to throw. So to throw out or to cast out. Cast out. Antichrist. That means. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to, yeah. I'm going to take things out of order a little bit. Uh, the next thing to do is vocabulary, and I do want to take time with that, but I'd like to get to something that uh, is in the workbook. I think this will be encouraging to you, uh, but you don't have the workbook with you. I think I have the copy. I can share a few. Are we reading the John? What are we doing? First yes, John. Yes, first John. I can just look uh, over here. Thank you. you included it. Did I give you a copy of it? Yeah, one? there might be one over there still, Dennis. Oh, I think I heard it. Oh, yeah. It, it was with our um, our alphabet. It's an yeah. pack. Oh, yeah. oh, then I do have it. Anybody made it? Here's, here's one. Here. I have the workbook, but what page are we on? Uh, it, yeah, I have it. Pages uh, six and seven. Uh, I well, it, it was uh, in this with one. the alphabet. Yeah. Okay, so you guys have it? You have it, Ed? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. I'd like to just uh, <laughs> do this with you slowly <laughs> to give you. Uh, this will give us practice in several things, recognizing the letters, seeing where the accents are, and learning how to syllabify or divide the, the words into syllables. And I'll do it with you. Uh, we'll go slow. And I think we're not going to give the meaning of these words now. We're just going to pronounce them. But we're going to be able to read. Now, this uh, title here is all caps. That's an iota, omega, alpha, nu, nu, uh, omicron, upsilon. It looks like a Y, but it's an upsilon. Uh, yeah. It's actually the name John. Uh, Ioannu. Ioannu. And alpha means it's first John. Um, there's three epistles. Uh, it would be Ioannu, alpha, beta, and gamma. All right. Kai. Uh, that, I'll tell you that word. That's one of the most common words in the Greek alphabet. The Greek language, it means and. Hi. Esten. 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 How te. See the rough reading? Yeah. How te. Hey. 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 Angelia. Angelia. Hain. Hey. Hey. Rough reading. Ake ka amen. Ake ka amen. Up. 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 Now that's what they call the elision. It's mm -hmm. uh, the apostrophe there tells you a letter was dropped out, and he gave us that uh, uh, example. Uh, Remember, he said up and boom. This up out to up to. I. Now here we've got a long word. You see the gamma nasal there. And actually, he gave us an ex that as an example. Anangelam. Anangelam. Who mean? Who mean? See the rough reading? Hati, another rough reading. Hati. But the accent is there with the rough reading. Hati. Ha. Ha. Theos. Theos. Os. 
Opposed. Esten. Esten. Now notice there is a word that doesn't have any accent. That happens occasionally. Uh, but it, uh, there's rules for that. We won't get into that now. Kai. 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 Scotia. Scotia. Now notice that the last two letters there. Uh, is that a diphthong or not? No. Why not? It's not the. Uh, no. It doesn't end in an I and an ypsilon or upsilon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> N. Alto. Alto. Now, what's that little thing under the omega? I, I got a that's right. Does it change the pronunciation of the? <laughs> yeah, that is not. It does not. Right. Uk. Uk. Esten. Esten. Udemia. Yeah, that's a fun word to say. Uh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, on. Now those two vowels here at the beginning also are not a diphthong, so you pronounce them as two separate syllables. Apolmen. Apolmen. Ati. Ati. Koinonion. Koinonion. Ekomen. Met, met, how to, how to, Kai, and to, to, Scotte, Scotte, Paris Atonement, Paris Atonement. I like to say that one too. Uh, is, is that a comma in Greek? Yes, that is. Yes, there. it is. I'm, I think I'm lost. Four Damatha. Line four. Now, there you go. Kai, U, for Tain, Alethaeon, Alethaeon, Eon, De, En, To, Foti, Foti, Peripatomen, Peripatomen, Rough breathing there. Al tos. Al tos. Esten. Esten. N. To. To. T. To. T. Poino neon. Poino neon. Echoman. Echoman. Met. Met. Alelon. Alelon. Kai. Kai. Ta. Ta. Haima. Haima. Yesu. Yesu. What name is that? Jesus. 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 Yes. Two. Two. We you. We you. Remember we talked about that word we you. We you. We you. Son. Out to. Out to. Casa Ridze. Here's an example. When you have a zeta at the beginning of a word, it's pronounced Z. Like we normally do, zoo or zeal. But if it's in the middle of the word, it's pronounced as a DZ. So here's a case where they do that. Katharidze, it's like a DZ. Hamas, Apol, Pases, Amartias, Aon, Apelman. Pati, Amartian, Uk, Echoman, He Altus, Planoman, Kai, He, Alethea, Uk, Esten, Sen, Umi, excuse me, Haini, Haini. Eon, Eon, Hamalagoman, Hamalagoman, you want to say that one again? Hamalagoman. See how I'm trying to see Omicron different from the Omega. Hamalagoman. Tas, Hamartias, Hamalagoman. This das, Esten, Dikaios, Hina, 
Adikias, Adikias, Eon, Eppelman, Ati, Uk, Uk. Okay, let's take our time here. A Martek Hamen. See how the you, you don't have any accents until the last three syllables. Yeah. So none of those first ones. It's a six syllable word. Sustain, Oyuman, Altan, Kai, Pa, Lagos, Altu, Uk, Estin, and Umi. Okay, now I'm going to uh, ask you to try to say it with me, not after me. We'll go slow. <laughs> Real slow. Okay. okay. <laughs> Is this working or should we go uh, back to I'm um, I'm I'm lost. I can't do this. I mean I'm just Okay, I could try again well, at two one, but if we go a I, little slower, I mean, I, okay. I can't. I can't keep up with this. Okay, let's go honest. slower then. <laughs> Am I the um, only one? <laughs> well, I've got a few of them. Yeah, like a few of the bigger words. Yeah, it's still I'm tough. I'm just. Yeah. I mean, it's I'm about. Ha it's it, you know some mix. I'm getting some of it, but okay, well, mostly let's, I'm. Let's I'm go a little slower lost. and uh, <laughs> not together, but yeah, after me. Okay. Technia. Technia. Moo, Tauta, Grafo. Grafo. Is this better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I was going too fast. No, it's okay. Yeah. It's part of it is me understanding the pronunciation. I almost hear an L in the owl, for example. And that's just me hearing, okay. right? Yeah. It's okay. Who mean? Who mean? Uh, see the rough breathing there? Yeah. Okay, another rough reading. Hina. Hina. May. May. Now let's take this one slow. Rough reading and the accents over the second syllable. Can I yeah. ask about um, yes. the Iota Nu Alpha word? Wouldn't that be Hina? Iota Hina? Hina. Oh, okay, sorry. I just heard badly. My bad. Okay. Hina. Thank okay. you. May. And then Hamarte. Um, Te. Harmate. Now see the the, the te uh, second last syllable is an eta. That's the long sound. And the last syllable is te. It's not a, not te, it's te. Amarte te. Amarte te. Kai. Eon. Tis. Now here we've got a rough breathing again. Amarte. 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 Yeah, Amarte. yeah that's, it's just another T in the end. So. Mm -hmm. right. And you can kind of tell that that's related to the one on the line yeah. above. Amarte. Ta, and then Amarte. Paracleton. 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 Okay. That, by the way, that kappa lambda is a consonant cluster that we can pronounce together. Okay. So they, those three letters, clay, is one syllable. Paracleton. Echo men. Echo men. Pros, pros, han, han, patera. It's not patera. It's patera. 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 Why? Why the distinction? Well, because epsilon is pronounced different from eta, and this is an epsilon. 
Well, okay. <laughs> uh, but we're not pronouncing. Well, I'm asking is we're not pronouncing U epsilon the same or in, in every case. We're not pronouncing. I mean, we do the same thing in English, but. Okay. okay. Have I, mean, I done that? I wasn't aware that I did it, but I might have. Okay. And now you're saying okay. ter. If you catch me, stop. No, and I'm not, I'm not. But if it's that, it's just that we do the same thing in English. Yeah. And that's fine. But it's it's not consistent. I mean, yeah. the only people I know that consistently pronounce their vowels is the British. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get a little sloppy in that and you know. But as long as we do it the same way, so this is kind of like the English pronunciation that we're using here. Yeah. Uh, for er, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, er, it's a schwa sound. We would say in English. Of what sound? We call it a schwa. 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 Yeah, in English, uh, you say er, you can't tell if it's an er or you er, yeah. or maybe even an ar. It's the e upside down with the dots, right? Yeah. Well, never heard that. Before. Okay, yeah. it's okay. I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm trying to be consistent. Oh, you that. are probably being very consistent, but there's we're we're Americans and we're speaking in a, in a, a dead language with an American accent. Yeah. <laughs> and we have, I mean, I'm not even. You know, I've lived all over the country, so I don't even speak the English you speak. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. The <laughs> yeah. yeah. I grew up in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And, there you go. Uh, you have a pretty middle English. Yeah. yeah, but I tried to change my way of speaking <laughs> because uh, we used to pronounce our ORs like ARs. Yeah. Like CARN, C O R N. We pronounced it Karn. Karn. And it sounds wow. so hokey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't like Karn. it, so I tried to change. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. But I'm trying to be consistent with the what he taught us to pronounce. Patura. And he's got good reasons Patura. for it. Patura. Okay. Yeah, Patura. Oh. Um, E-A soon. E-A soon. Yeah, see, what e is that a two, two different syllables. And then soon is the third is syllable. That, what is uh, that word? Inflection of Jesus' name? It is. It's an inflected. Jesus yes. is a lexical form. Uh, the term lexical form is uh, intentional. Yes. It's the way, the form that you'll see it uh, listed in a lexicon. And we're going to be learning the lexical forms of all the words. But we're not going to learn the inflected forms. Uh, what, or, let me say this correctly. Uh, there are many inflected forms of these words, but we're going to pay attention to the lexical form when we look for it in the lexicon. So when we get into the vocabulary in just a few minutes, uh, we'll be looking at the lexical form. Okay. Kristan. Kristan. Dikayan. Dick Dick I, uh, okay, you gotta tell I, us what that means. Should I say it again? <laughs> you just gotta tell us what that means. I'm sorry. That means righteous. Dick I, uh, Dick I, so Jesus the, Christ the, the righteous. Is, Dick I, uh, is this Jesus Christ the righteous? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. And notice that they're all ending in the sun. On, yeah. Well, yeah it's, right? It, they oh. are. Now, there's a reason that they match each other in the uh, case. But we haven't learned cases yet. That's okay, but uh, but yeah, um, we'll get there. We we will get there. Kai, Kai, Altas, Altas. No, there's a rough breathing there. Hilasmas, Hilasmas. See, I made a mistake and I accented the second syllable, but the third syllable. Hilas Moss, Estin, Amartio, Amartio, Amon, Amon, U, Peri, Peri, Tone, Tone, Ameteron, Ameteron. Now it's not Teron, it's Teron. Is that? You Amen. said, hey, is that a, a rough breathing? Yes, that's a backwards apostrophe. Yeah. It's the rough breathing over the eta. And the eta has the long sound, 
as opposed to the epsilon with the short sign. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm terone. Not not terone, terone. Terone. Manon. Allah. Allah. Kai. Kai. Eri. Eri. Rough reading here. Halu. 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 Two. Cosmo. Cosmo. All right. Allah. Is that a? <laughs> it, it's, it's pronounced like Allah. <laughs> okay, it's not. But it's it not means a, but. All right. It's not. It's not the Aramaic. As in the conjunction. Or, as in, oh, okay. No, I, no, it's okay. I didn't know if they brought in Aramaic words. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, Allah. It means but. It's a conjunction yeah. of but. But it comes from uh, an adjective, alas, which means other or another. Oh, okay. And you can kind of figure out the connection between those two. Uh, we say sometimes otherwise, meaning right. um, something different. Yeah. But and. But and. Uh, <laughs> but not only that. 2.3. Uh, Kai. Kai. And. And. Tuto. Tuto. Genosca man. Genosca man. Hati. Hati. Egnoka men. Egnoka men. And by the way, the uh, way you would divide that word is between the epsilon and the gamma. E gno. Yeah, okay. That consonant okay. cluster, ah. gamma nu. It's not egg no, it's egg no. Egg no. Okay. Altan. Eon, Eon, Tosas, Entolas, Entolas, Altu, Altu, Te Rome, Te Rome, Ah, Ah, Legon, Legon, Ati, Ati. Would somebody like to volunteer to pronounce that next word? I'll try. Egnoka. 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 Sorry, right. Accent. Yeah. Egnoka. Okay. Altan. Altan. Kai. Kai. Tos. Volunteer for the next word. Oh, I can. I think I can do this one. Entolas. Accent on the last. I think I tried, Tos. but it may have not come that way. Entolas. There you go. Yeah. Somebody want. Uh, somebody different want to try for the next word. Oh. Okay. Ow, two. Oh, two. Yes. May. May. Somebody, a volunteer for the next word. Let's take one syllable at a time. First hey, one is. Hey, Rome. Hey, yeah, you said it. Hey, Rome. Hey, Rome. Hey, yes. Hey, uh, here's a nice one. A volunteer <laughs> for this word. <laughs> the first syllable is su, right? And the second syllable is states. Su states. Su states. Yeah, you're right. Su states. You you've got me. Okay. <laughs> Su states. Good. Now for you. Esten. 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 I. I. N. N. Tuto, Tuto, A, A, Aletheia, Aletheia. Now look at this one. The diphthong in that the last three uh, vowels there. Where is the diphthong? Uh, what? Second letter has to be uh, epsilon A, 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 yoda. A, A, so A, A, it rhymes with what word? A. Eight. Eight. There you go. Eight. 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 By the way, that means truth. Yeah. And we have a friend who had a name, Alethea. I have a friend who just named their baby girl Alethea, actually. Did yeah. you know that's what it meant? Yes, they did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ook. 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 Estin. 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 
Now here's another what? illusion. Oh, it's an illusion. Uh, it's um, goodness. Um, da. Da'an. Da That's how they would pronounce it. Da'an. Uh, yeah, it's uh, almost as if it's one word. Yeah. Uh, Tere. 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 How to. How to. Tan. Tan. Volunteer mm. for the next word. No, Log on. Log on. Alethos. Alethos. And. And. Tuto. Tuto. A. A. Agape. Agape. What's that word mean? Love. Yeah, <laughs> say it that way. Love. Thank you. Oh, here's a fun one. Oh my gosh. Teteleo time. Teteleo time. N. N. Tuto. Tuto. Genosco men. It's not the most common. It's the most common. And actually, that makes a big difference. Um, <sighs> um, this word means we know. And if I said Ginosco, Ginos, Ginosco men with an omega, uh, that would make it a subjunctive. Uh, and it would mean uh, we might know. Huh. Oh, that's pretty different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Would that word well, be pronounced really differently if after the gamma there was another, we inserted another new? Because uh, it you know, so man, sounds like the, the, the uh, yeah. a GN sound. Saying, gonna, oh, gamma. I iota. think I know what you mean. Take away the uh, iota and you've got a gamma new to go. Right. It no. sounds real similar. No. Uh, I don't right. know if I'm it's hearing it right. It's kind of where I'm coming Actually, um, you wouldn't know this uh, at this point, but uh, that particular mm -hmm. word in some, lex uh, some inflected forms of it, the iota would be dropped and the gamma nu would be together. Uh, and that's one of the identifying factors of this word. Uh, we've got uh, gnosko means I know. Gnosis without the iota between the gamma and the nu means knowledge. Yeah. And epignosis means it's a strengthened form of knowledge. It uh, means full knowledge for, uh, that's one possibility. Uh, but you caught that, yeah. That's good. Well, it was just I, I, I figured it might mean something written would be different, but hearing it, it would sound the same, even if there are two it, different it's words. Very, very close. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hati. We're almost done. And and auto auto estimate estimate ha Lego, Lego, in, in, auto, auto, menin, Are you starting to get used to the B? I mean, the new looking, which is like B. And are you thinking in terms of a, a new instead of a B? Oh, yeah. You, you that, it, what, helps, what helps me when I was learning this is, is, um, it looks a whole lot like a Nike swish. Oh, and Nike was the Greek goddess of victory. Okay, and it starts with an N. Yeah. So yeah. that's so I'm picturing it that way when I read it. Okay. Well, whatever helps you. Nope. Uh, Ophelia. Ophelia. Sorry, what line are we on? Uh, second last line, oh, okay. fourth word. Ophele, Ophele, Kathos, Ekenos, Ekenos, Peri, Apatosin, Peri, Peri, Apatosin. Let's try it again. Peri, 
Very Well, peripateo means to walk. Oh, okay. And this the epsilon there before the P is what they call an augment. It changes it to very Eric, just from the back. Uh, he, she, so, it walked. Okay. Kai, Altos, Altos, Hutos, Hutos, Harry Patain. Harry Patain. You did it. Woohoo! <laughs> Amen. Very <laughs> 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 good. You got the inflection right. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the textbook. Um, we've only got a few minutes, but um, I think I'll assign the rest of what we don't do tonight for you to do on your own. And I think what I'll do is um, have a little quiz at the beginning of class next week on, on vocabulary. The vocab. uh, so we're going to be trying to memorize these words. Now, I'm not expecting 100% perfection, but um, he gives us in the footnotes here some helpful things to memorize these. For instance, um, well, the first ones is an angelos, uh, or messenger. Um, uh, Maine, Ed told us what that meant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the third word there, anthropos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, don't be too concerned about the two little things after that anthropos and then u and then pos. We'll get into that in a couple of chapters from now. But the first word is all you need to be concerned about right now. And he gives us a footnote 10, anthropology, the study of humans. Well, okay, the word means man, person, human being, people, or mankind. Now notice he separates them sometimes with semicolons and other times with um, commas. He explains why he does that in the section before. He's got some verbiage here that explains oh. his conventions. Semicolons are different meanings and commas are yes are, are some syno synonymous meanings in English. So co common well, words like person and human being yes. versus a man mm -hmm. versus people or mankind. They're slightly they're similar, but they're slightly different meanings. Yeah. Which is uh, people and mankind. You might interchange in English. Yeah. Yes. So he says That's right above that, I use a semicolon to divide the different meanings. For example, for anthropos, I list man semicolon. That's one meaning. Then the second grouping, person and or human being, is another meaning. And the third grouping, people or mankind, is a third meaning. Well, they're very similar. But uh, that's his way of grouping the different categories of meanings. Um, let's do a couple more. Apostolos. Apostolos. That means an apostle, an envoy, or a messenger. Well, that's, we've got the word apostle in our vocabulary, so. It's easy enough to see, to see that. The next word is a the name of a town, Galilea. Oh, Galilea. And that means Galilee. Now yes. it's easy enough to see. Yes. That. The next one, Rafe. Rafe. Um, it means writing, 
semicolon or scripture. So two different meanings. Um, a writing could be any kind of ordinary writing, like a shopping list. But scripture is um, inspired writing. God is part. This would be in the noun form? It is a noun. Yes. Footnote 11 tells you <coughs> an autograph is a writing of one's own Altas name. Altas means. That means name? Uh, no. Altas means. Uh, it's got several meanings, but uh, it can mean he or himself. Um, my his own name. Yeah, one's own. Those yeah, one's own. own. Okay. Uh, for instance, the word the word automobile. That's got the same auto in there, which means self uh, propelled, self uh, movable. Oh, uh, toss means self. In that context, it, it can mean a lot of different things. In fact, we've got one whole chapter devoted to the word okay. top. But it doesn't oh, mean right. name. <laughs> okay. It doesn't mean name. Doesn't no, mean, it doesn't mean okay. name. Name. Um, so in this sentence, that's one's own. Yeah. One's oh, own is right. what he means. By okay. Alto. Your own scribble. Right. <laughs> right. Um, the you scribble. The you get the on. idea, though. Yeah. Right. Those footnotes, I think, will help Oops. you to to memorize these words. And we'll have a, a little, um, it won't be a written quiz, it'll be a verbal quiz. And the way I'm going to do it is I'll call the word out in Greek and let anyone in the whole group um, say what it means. Okay. Um, we're not going to be grading anything in this class. Okay. So I'll just do it. <laughs> and use just this quiet. also as an exercise to help you pronounce things. Yeah, yeah. Try to pronounce it out loud as you're learning. Yeah. Uh, I think that'll help you. Mm -hmm. Girl, are we going all the way down to Christos for uh, next week? Uh, yes. Okay. Much... Do you want us to do the proper names also? Um, you can if you want. Uh, they're easy Please. enough, I think. Abraham, Dawid, Aulus, Petras. How about these Dawid. other words in 4.7? Um, no, okay. those are just practice words. We'll talk about them next okay. week. Okay. All right. I, I okay. do want to read together this advanced information because even though it's a little bit harder, it's very useful, I think. Um, hmm. And then uh, after that, um, he's going to give us an overview of what's coming up in the next five chapters. And, and hopefully we'll all have the workbooks by then. Uh, okay, sure. Who doesn't have the workbook yet? I still don't have mine. I have a PDF file yeah. up to this point that was sent to me by Veritas because I still haven't got it. Okay, so yeah. I, I should be one. okay. I will print off my PDF. Yeah, I've been on Kindle. I've been printing them off on that, but we're going to probably get this one. On. So yeah, okay. you might have to wait. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. yeah. That's why I got the Amazon Kindle one. Chapter five um, is an important chapter because yeah. he's going to talk about English grammar yeah. as well as Greek grammar. People learn that too. <laughs> well, it will help us a lot in, in two ways. It will help us to learn the Greek grammar, but we need to learn our English grammar. Oh, yeah. uh, they don't teach it anymore in schools. Yeah. But, uh, I think it's important. I, I'll give you a handout next week of um, something I worked up about English grammar, which will include more than what he has, yeah. and it will be useful for you to use from now on. So, Let's uh, close in prayer. And would one of you like to do that? Yes. Holy Father, we thank you that no sin can corrupt your glory and your holiness. That even through our sin, you found a way to rescue us through your son, Jesus Christ. We pray for 
those families in our church body who are hurting. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would comfort them and help them. Help us to fall in love with the living word. Not just your word that is printed on pages, but that's written on our hearts for those of us who trust in Christ as your Savior. So we pray for people that we know and love who don't know you and that they would fall in love with you through your son. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, by the way, I gave you this handout. This is for your own, your own benefit, but what it does, this is something I found years ago. It helped me to understand how reliable our scriptures are. It gives us confidence that what we have, as if we needed confidence, but uh, it yes. might be helpful to, to use somebody. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, he had the comments about the, the, the punctuation and all the stuff that wasn't originally there. Yeah, that's that's something that would be a curveball for most. It's about like, well, with a big sweet. No, that's well, no, my you yeah, know, it is important. Uh, it, my questions are really more subtle than that. It's to understand the change of who's handling those documents because I, I recognize that for the Western. The Western Church, Latin was the language, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and, but it didn't start that way. And I'm not sure when it transitioned. Yeah. And somewhere in that Probably process, the they began to think it was important to write down the Greek mm -hmm. pronunciation yeah. cues right. because it makes a difference. Oh, because yeah. most of the people then who were studying it, it wasn't their Latin. principal language anymore. So it became important. And, yeah. and it makes sense that happened about time Latin became the principal language of the church. Oh, right. I imagine if we yeah. took all our text messages yeah. today. So, yeah. And then yeah. English started to die off. We actually would probably want to make sure that's it's actually <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, well, and so, I mean, yeah, it, I, yeah the, it's an interesting question. What's the manuscript edition for, for texts that are in Greek with punctuation? Was that coming out of Byzantium? Yeah. Uh, was that, was so that a it, tradition that evolved in the monastic communities of the West? I'm I mean, really curious. Yeah, it's, it's just a curiosity more than yeah. anything. I, I, don't, I feel confident that given well, how contextual language is and how much we have of Koine Greek that they can go and, and construct. Because if you have five choices for, the, for what this word could be. I think you got a pretty good chance of constructing what that word should be. Well, that's if you context. have a decent yeah. understanding of the rest of the passage. Well, but, yeah. but, like, yeah, but there are theological be choices to be made yeah. in this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so the theology, the theology of the early church uh, didn't, uh, didn't get recorded in the way they copied scripture. But later on the theological understanding of the church did and so you know i'm just a little curious if there's any subtle difference yeah. i one mean one of the factors yeah. was um the church the early church was persecuted so much in the first three centuries mm -hmm. that it's amazing we have what we have yeah, and, well, yeah. it's been what well, we have quite a bit naturally uh transmitted and protected and uh oh yeah it's, it, we have it's it's it manuscript copies i think really uh, start to pick up we, in the in the third century we, well, we, we have the manuscript again, copies well. but we also have the commentaries of the church fathers yeah, right. right alongside them yeah. what we have is amazing it's yeah, there's nothing else really, like really, it really, god has over preserved and over again, this. tried to destroy all that we, we have yeah. the faith once passed on well we all have the, it yeah yeah you know, and I, I don't have doubt in that, but there's subtleties in it. I like yeah. To yeah. yeah, and exactly. we'll come across what they call lexical variants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, textual variants. Right. Say. Yeah. Um, but there's there's a whole science of textual criticism mm -hmm. devoted to determining which are the most reliable texts. Yeah. The, and the unfortunate reality is that there's a lot of scholars right now who uh, while they would call themselves textual textual critics, the emphasis is very much more on criticism. Yeah. They have very little interest in looking yeah. objectively at the text. And so they make all these accusations about like, 
oh, well, the New Testament's got way too much textual variant. You have no idea what the original text is. It's like, well, most of yeah, those are really, are, really tiny. Yeah. yeah. And these then, are higher critics. And, and the only I mean, reason, right, they're higher critics, right. But yeah. sometimes they kind of put themselves in the category they, of textual critics. They, they, critics. they call yeah, it textual critical. criticism, but it doesn't mean what you're saying. Right. No, no, right. So. Yeah. Right. When Sproul says textual criticism, he means something different than yeah. that. <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah. But yeah. I well, appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to stop the recording at least. And we got to get. Bye, Zoom guy. <laughs>